The summer of 1942 has arrived. The Nazi Germans sit on the doorstep of Moscow, and the entire fate of World War II hangs in the balance. This is Legendary Tactics. While the Soviet forces have increased considerably, it's still an incredibly dangerous time for their nation. And so we begin turn seven with the Nazi Germans right on Moscow's doorstep, just as the beginning of the summer arrives. It's not looking too good, although we are able to improve our uh, units now, which is great. And we just hope to hold on for as long as we possibly can. And maybe, just maybe, we can turn this thing around. As the turn marker advances, it reveals the midway event, which allows me to claw back a victory point. And uh, hopefully that will uh, help out my cause. And uh, also, in addition to that, there's a two-front war rule um, that uh, is in effect. So uh, that forces him to discard a card. Now there's some reinforcements arriving just as the VPs are adjusted and that's going to uh, hopefully help. If you look at it, really, there's not a lot of, uh, I've got these two units here arriving, another one in a couple turns, and then that is more or less it. There's a couple more units arriving after that, but basically um, that's going to be it for the reinforcements. And uh, so really the, the main source of strength will come from the gradual improvement of the Soviet army. So his reinforcement is the Italian, 8th Italian, just a 2-3, nothing too crazy. He draws up his cards and uh, discards the one for the two-front war. Checks his supply. He is uh, very easily uh, in supply. And uh, his 8th Italian uh, goes down and then right back up to the um, the rail movement box basically goes into Lublin and then right uh, into the re rail movement box as reinforcements and here we go first of all he moves into Leningrad a sad moment that gives him a victory point and then he advances uh, basically consolidating on um, on Moscow and uh, it's going to be very tough to hold. Um, hopefully we can dig in this turn somehow and uh, stave him off. And then he moves into Kharkov, uh, getting another victory point as he passes through the 17th Army. And then, uh, yes, just basically begins to consolidate his forces in the push on Moscow and Stalino. That's going to be the focus of the upcoming round, I'm sure. He just adjusts his uh, third panzer there. The target appears in Moscow. And with the counter blow in Stalino, I'm going to have to deal with a battle down there as well. I have a card to play. Now, this is uh, not going to be represented properly here on the screen, but basically I get a card that allows me to draw two. And that will give me a couple cards that I can then use to place a counter blow and force him to attack my uh, reinforced unit there just south of Moscow. This is a kind of a desperation move, but I'm hoping to um, at least mitigate the, the damage on that, um, on that side of things. But then the worst possible thing happens, and he actually plays a card to cancel my event and that one is showing properly the inexperienced Soviet officers card and that is not good so he cancels the card and makes me use my last card to do the counter blow but this time I decide to just let it go I guess the uh, unit here the first Baltic will uh, have to fight another day. So he starts off with the main show, with the big roll, the big attack on Moscow. I've got only four strength. He has the the, the Panzers. He's got 10 and he's got uh, 22. So it's 22 on four. Um, it is shifted uh, because of the city and because it's an objective hex. However, he decides to use the Blitz to cancel that. 
and so it's 22 on four with uh, with one shift um, to the left and it uh, ends up being a four one he rolls a three um, which thankfully is a dr or defender retreat result now as moscow happens to be entrenched a dr uh, result is uh, no retreat which is perfect because that's uh, not something i wanted to do anyway and managed to hold on to moscow at least for now so in the south we have uh six plus ten attacking my four strength west army uh, lucky for him the counter blow means there's no shift for the city so it's um, basically just a straight uh four on one of course he's going to drop a blitz marker to make that five on one and so his role is a three which is defender shattered ds i can retreat um but um I'll have to give up Stellino. I do get my West unit back um, on my turn at no cost, which is uh, okay, <laughs> but not ideal um, he, as he's going to not only take Stellino, but he's going to start moving and maneuvering around, uh, cutting off my Crimean uh, unit there and making life difficult for the unit in Rostov as well. Now with the Italian unit, he's going to detrain and put him in Kharkov, uh, which is um, right close to the front, which is exactly what he wanted to uh, to do. And the pressure is on in the south. This does not look good, I have to admit. Can we pull this out? He's already pushing through to Stalingrad. Rostov is looking fairly shaky right now. And Moscow, of course, is just hanging on by the skin of its teeth. I have to say, I really enjoy this game much better when it's uh, in a mud turn or a winter turn even uh, other than the summer turns so we're gonna see what this is a very very crucial year in the game if uh, if i can hold on as the uh, as the russians um, through this year i stand a chance to turn the tide but it all depends on uh, the next really the next couple turns to see what happens um, so i start uh, drawing up my hand and i end up with uh, general mud in uh, in uh, my hand which means that i have to discard it i guess there's no mud in july which is unfortunate and when checking supply obviously the crimean army is totally cut off with not a lot of uh, potential for rescue at this point we'll see what we can do so now i grab my reinforcements And I place them in the south. I think I've got enough units near Moscow at the moment to uh, survive, but I definitely need to reinforce the south. Now I'm going to discard two cards to bring back Leningrad. And why I like Leningrad is it's a fort and it can be locked down. And it's going to go right where I need it most, which is Stalingrad. I do have some room for uh, some stuff to turn up in the north. And that is going to be um, in Yaroslavl. Um, we're going to bring back that shattered unit from last round. So for the upgrade, it's a tough decision, but I'm going to upgrade the one under the shattered unit. It's going to be uh, the third Belarusian, and uh, that's seven strength. Okay, movement time. I'm going to uh, advance that... Uh, new unit and get it right up close and personal with those panzers got to lock that down that line and keep some strength there also northwest is going to move into the rail movement box for future use so in the south there's going to be a lot of movement um, because uh, we've got to do what we can to lock down those panzers so first off we're going to move the reserve uh, there to um, see if we can rescue the unit that's out of supply and I'm going to reinforce that um, by holding on to that city. And we've got a nice front here now with the, um, the first Baltic. Um, the uh, fourth army cannot dash through there. They're going to have to take on one of us. And uh, battling across a river and into a city, I like those odds, especially if they're going to be 1-1. One, one. So um, that is a good thing, a good setup. We're also going to reinforce Rostov 
And uh, unfortunately, the movement of these units is not very far, but it does give us a bit of a secondary line, um, which is a, a good thing. And obviously, we're not going to bother with any attacks at this time. We've uh, got all of our resources dug in on the defense. So as expected, here come the counter blows. The first counter blow happens with the 6th Army and then with the stack in Stellino. And then finally, the big stack with the 3rd Panzer right next to Moscow. Bit of a risky play, but this could pay off huge for him. First of all, the counter blow near Moscow. I'm going to use the 1st Baltic in Tula to take care of the counter blow. And that's going to be uh, a 7 on 10, which is a 1 on 2. There's no terrain uh, involved because it's a counter blow and a roll of four, which is no effect. Probably the best rule I could have hoped for in that situation. So um, the line in around Moscow holds. Down in the south, in Rostov, they've got uh, the unit there, south unit, has to attack uh, the sixth army at four strength and uh, the other armies here at five strength. So it's a three on nine, which is a one on three. And that uh, results in a roll of four, which is a counterattack, which is kind of what I expected. Unbeknownst to him, though, I have a card which forces an exchange result. And so the counter blows end. I lose my unit in, Se in Rostov, the south, and he loses his third uh, Romanian. And Rostov remains barely under Soviet control. Now with this exchange, I decide to use my cadre here to maintain control of Rostov, at least for now. Now we enter the removals phase. So the disorganized uh, unit uh, loses its marker and I have managed to restore a tenuous supply line to uh, the Crimean army here. Just basically like an outstretched hand from the city there. And uh, hopefully that actually might be um, a bit of discouragement for, for him. I know the first Panzer seemed to be digging into my territory, but now suddenly looks like um, it could be, uh, if not surrounded, then at least hampered in its movement. It's not going to be able to get very far um, the way things sit. So even though my cadre doesn't extend a zone of control, um, there really isn't anywhere for him to go where he, you know, can't get cut off or at least get bogged down a little bit, at least hopefully, um, you know, just on his own anyway. We'll see what uh, what the results are. If he, if he and the 6th Army can kind of push through, um, there may be an opportunity there. Now we arrive at the detraining phase, but I've got a little surprise uh, in hand, and that is a card that allows me to swap out my cadre for a surrendered unit. And I'm going to do that now in Rostov, which gives me a nice, nice reinforce, reinforcement. Uh, Central Army, it's great to see you back. And suddenly the situation in the south seems to have stabilized, um, you know, a fair bit. Um, he's, he's going to have to really work hard to break through. Suddenly, uh, you know, those twos and threes uh, three strength units are just not looking like they're going to be tough enough to break through just on their own and he only really has that one panzer unit so overall we're looking at the situation here um and i know leningrad has fallen but overall you know if you look at moscow there's a good solid line there um he's as long as i've got cards to counter blow he's not going to be able to direct all of his energy uh at uh, moscow and he's going to have to face uh, some pretty tough units um, on um, the flanks of the the city so overall i i feel a little bit more confident about my position obviously this is far from over but we'll see where things go from here with that i'm going to detrain uh, northwest just to block up that uh, potential um, gap in the line now we've got a nice little web of zones of control and uh, so it's going to be very, very tough for, um, for him to push through, especially with units threatening to surround him now. Um, there's <laughs> that first panzer suddenly looks quite vulnerable um, and really doesn't have anywhere to go in, except into that uh, pocket where 
he could end up in big trouble. And we begin turn eight, which is July, August, 1942. Uh, the Germans lost a cadre last uh, turn, so they uh, place that on the turn track. And then we take a look at turn eight. The Germans get an extra card. They also get two blitz markers and they get a cadre that they place in their uh, reinforcements box. With that, they drop their cards, check supply, everything looks good, and the moves begin. In the north, they begin to push further against my Moscow line. In the south, they actually retreat a bit. I think this is the first time they've ever had to pull back in any way um, since the beginning of the game. Uh, but the 17th Army retreats away from the Crimean uh, Army there. And then the 1st Panzer, at the risk of um, being surrounded, um, decides to go on the offense and to circle around to do a big attack on Central and hopefully restore the, uh, the supply line that way. As an afterthought, the 4th Romanian also makes a move to threaten uh, to cut off supply of likely the North Caucasus, um, but uh, maybe making a, a run for Yaroslav. The combat is pretty obvious and simple. The uh, German player uh, attacks Moscow once again, which was to be expected, and then they attack uh, the unit just south of Rostov uh, to try and cut off Central from supply. And uh, so there's a lot riding on this one. In an act of cutting or an act of desperation, you can decide I play NKVD for the event, and that uh, means both players roll a die. Loser takes one step loss, and I'm hoping to stave off the, uh, the potentially negative result that the giant attack would have on Moscow. I think I'm a genius here. However, with some savvy card play, the Axis player is about to outdo me. Now, this card doesn't display properly on Vassal for whatever reason. He plays the card that allows him to search the discard pile and draw back a card. And he pulls back the card, which um, is known as Inexperienced Soviet Officers, which cancels my last played card event. And so um, that way, he basically cancels my NKVD and... Um, basically forces the full roll. And so we renew the battle for Moscow. The, the odds here, we've got uh, 10 plus 12 is 22 on 4, which is a 5 on 1. It will be shifted uh, once for the city, once for the objective hex. However, he uses his blitz marker to cancel out one of those shifts. So what ends up as a, um, what would normally be a 5 on 1 becomes a 4 on 1, and he rolls a five, which is Defender Shattered. Now, however, because Moscow is dug in, this uh, it actually combat result, Defender Shattered, results in an exchange, which is awesome because that means that we uh, basically trade one step loss each and Moscow remains Soviet held. Now, he actually removes my unit uh, by accident. He forgets that um, Moscow actually has another uh, step to it. Um, but... Um, he has to take a loss uh, on one of his units, and the 9th Army is going to bear the brunt of that. And we turn to the battle in the south, where we have the 1st Panzer attacking uh, near Rostov. Um, this is going to be a 7 on 3, um, which is normally a 2 on 1. It's shifted once to the left for the uh, river, once to the right for the fact that it's an armored unit in the open, and... Um, he's going to use his blitz marker. So he's going to hit me basically with a three on one and he rolls a six, which is defender destroyed. And so he sends my unit to the destroyed units box. And that means that Rostov is basically surrounded. Um, however, I think this uh, is a very precarious position. And I think I'm going to be able to not only uh, hold my position, but even turn it around next turn. Now we arrive at the uh, detraining stage and he's going to put his second army in the center. He's actually going to rethink it and put him in Kharkov. Um, I'm not sure about whether that's the best move overall. I don't feel I'm threatening his line quite the same way in the center. Uh, that line's more for holding uh, him back rather than going on any offensive maneuvers. Uh, but that's where he uh, chooses to, uh, to place him. 
And so we roll onto the Russian half of the eighth turn now. And so I take the opportunity as my turn begins to remind uh, the German player that actually fortress units have two steps. And so the Moscow unit was not eliminated, but instead drops to a 2-3, which is awesome. Uh, that keeps uh, Moscow in the game. And uh, that's, that's going to be uh, a very tough nut to crack as the game progresses and as my units continue to improve. I drop my cards. Of course, I draw General Winter, which unfortunately can't apply in July. I'd love to have uh, Winter in July at this moment, but um, I end up having to swap that card out for another one. And I also draw Great Patriotic War, uh, which means that I have to uh, discard that. And I'm left with uh, the hand that I have. I do decide to play uh, the Allied Lendlease card, which uh, is displaying correctly. Um, and I'll take the two additional cards. I'm looking to get uh, some counter blows um, available and I need as many cards as I possibly can. Now checking supply, everyone seems to be okay. Uh, the unit in Rostov is on the verge of being cut off but has a narrow supply line uh, along the Sea of Azov there and uh, that's barely keeping it going. Um, it's, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see if I can keep that unit going. So first things first, I spend a card to re-fortify Moscow, um, which is great. The more, most time I can buy here is just hanging on uh, defending Moscow and making it uh, uh, as hard as possible to take because every turn I just get that little bit stronger. I have another card to play. And this allows me to uh, move any two units from the Shattered, Destroyed, or Surrendered boxes to the Rail Movement box, which is great. The Manpower Reserves is one of my favorite cards as, as the Russian player. So of course I'm going to take the Surrendered unit back, and I'm also going to take one of the Destroyed units back into the Rail Movement box, ready to uh, shore up the lines wherever I can at the end of the turn. Now is the Improvement phase, and after a lot of thought, I decide to boost the third ball up uh, boost up to the third Baltic and that again puts a lot of pressure on the center I'm beginning to think that I can actually um, push back that middle group and if I can I'm threatening the supply of uh, especially the units in the south but also potentially the units in the north as well and that could mean uh, they will have to go on to full-scale retreat which is of course what I'm looking to accomplish here Movement-wise, I'm uh, simply going to <laughs> move up my 3rd Baltic to surround the 4th Army, and that's going to create a nice quandary for him. Uh, my Caucasus uh, unit as well in, this, in the second line there, in the reinforcement line, he's going to go into the rail movement box, so that's why he disappears off your screen. Now in the south, this is where the real interesting maneuvers are. So Northwest moves around 1st Panzer's zone of control, uh, moves into uh, support central, uh, not only to support in terms of uh, the military strength, but also uh, to guarantee the supply line a little bit. Stalingrad also moves up a little bit. Um, I declare no voluntary attacks at this time. What I'm trying to do here is to just create a web of zones of control that are just going to start hemming him in where he's not going to be able to have the flexibility of movement that he's so used to. And with a few more units, I've loaded up the rail movement box uh, with a few more units arriving soon. I'm hoping to create uh, basically a, a web of units and zones of control that are just going to be impossible to hack through at this stage. Now the German player... Um, decides, uh, even though it might be against his better judgment, uh, well, first of all, he places a disorganized marker on a unit I'd forgotten to place before. Um, not that I was going to attack with him anyway. Um, he plays a, a card that uh, allows um, him to place extra counter blows um, on the map. And so he's discarded a couple cards here, one event and another card to place three counter blows around the Rostov uh, ring. Up north, he plays another card to place a counter blow uh, on his units uh, next to Moscow. Just to make it a bit difficult for me, I'm going to have to make some decisions here on um, what's going to happen. I know he's hoping for a counter attack on the first Baltic that's going to um, free up the fourth army, uh, but we'll see what happens here. 
Then he places another card to place a counter blow on the other big stack um, just to make things once again difficult. I know he's looking for a uh, uh, an opportunity to um, you know, basically f get a good counter attack. If he gets lucky, he can disrupt the line. Okay, let's focus on the counter blow in the north first with the second and fourth panzer. So this is going to be um, just, this counter blow is gonna just be done with my third Belarusian. Um, so that's seven on, on 12, which is one on two. My rule is a three, which is a counter attack, as I thought it might be. The first Baltic is also going to attack the um, the ninth army and the third Panzer. Uh, the odds are going to be pretty similar here. It's one on two, and I roll a three, which is another counter attack. In the south, I'm going to take care of those two counter blows with Central on the eleventh army and the sixth army, and uh, I'm going to uh, deal with the first Panzer with Northwest and see how that goes. So first of all, uh, Central. On uh, those two units is a five on seven, which is one on two. I roll a six, which fortunately is a, de a defender retreat, which is awesome. Um, and then my northwest against the first panzer is a roll of two uh, at one and two odds, which is a counterattack as well. So he's going to be faced with some interesting decisions here as the first panzer can counterattack, but uh, might be at, find themselves in a position where they're going to be uh, cut off here. So it's going to be very interesting to see what uh, how these uh, moves are um, handled. Now the counterattacks begin. With a fourth and second panzer, we have a 12 on 7, uh, which is a 3 on 2. Um, he rolls a 1, which is no effect. The counterattack with the 9th army and the 3rd panzer is 9 on 7, which is 1 on 1. He rolls a one again, which is a counterattack, which is something I doubt I will be actually taking advantage of. So now the retreats in the south uh, from Stellino. This is this will be interesting. So they uh, kind of scatter to the winds, uh, looking to form some sort of a defensive line. And the question is now, do I advance? Well, I think the best way to advance in this instance is to just pop up there and snag Stellino and then retreat back to Rostov. So maybe a bit of a gamey move, but um, it does mean that uh, he'll have to move back into Stellino to take it, and it takes away a victory point, at least temporarily. Now we still have to deal with the counterattack on Northwest uh, from the first Panzer, and that's a seven on three, which is a two on one. He rolls a one, which is no effect. Perfect. Except he has a card. Paul Van Kleist that allows me to allows him to re-roll any no effect or counter blow combat result. He decides to use that here. And he re-rolls a four, and that becomes defender retreat. Now I have to retreat towards a friendly supply source. Um, he actually does the first um, move for me, um, and then either for me to fix or to uh, adjust and take the second uh, space as well. Um, so he was just doing that. Um, he decides to advance in, but in the end retreats back to the Stellino area. Um, probably a wise choice considering the large amount of units that I have available to drop in the rail unit box uh, from the rail movement box this turn. First of all, I have to adjust the control of Stellino, which for some reason didn't show it uh, correct on the log file. Uh, Central had advanced and pulled back um, in a as I said, in a bit of a gamey move, but um, takes a victory point away from uh, the Germans, uh, at least for the moment. The counter blow in the north is to remind me of uh, the counter attack that is possible by the first Baltic. I choose to decline that. And I adjust my retreat of the northwest um, unit, um, pulling him close to Sevastopol. He's in good position to reinforce Rostov again and reestablish that supply line if necessary, but. I don't think the Germans are going to pose the same threat uh, to Rostov as they had uh, even a turn earlier. Now the fun part. I have three three threes to detrain. The first one goes here, second one goes here, third one goes here. And now as I look along my line, things are appearing to be pretty good. We actually have the first Panzer that's going to start next turn out of supply. Won't be 
likely hard for them to reestablish that, but it's still good to kind of put him in a panic and force him uh, on the defensive. And we're beginning to build up this defense in depth. You know, if you plow through one unit, you got another unit with another zone of control to, to get through. And there's other units there to swarm around and, and potentially uh, build up some good odds against, uh, against the enemy in attack. So the, the Germans definitely can sense that the tide is turning. The, uh, the, the lines are becoming a little more defensive on their part. And uh, even though they're still pushing desperately for Moscow, uh, their chance may have more or less passed. We'll have to see. Um, in the north, um, they've got a couple of units, uh, a couple of stragglers uh, hanging around. Nothing too crazy to be concerned about. Um, but, um, but the line around Moscow is still holding strong. We've got uh, the fourth army as well that we can put him out of supply at the beginning of the turn as well. So there's going to have to be some maneuvering on his part to save these units. Uh, it's never a good thing for a unit to go into the surrendered box, um, mainly because they're so expensive to get out. And uh, so the, the tide is beginning to turn. I'm, I'm beginning to sense a, a bit of a change. And it's good to see it's been a, a very hard fought battle thus far and really just hanging on by the skin of our skin of my teeth throughout most of this. But I, I'm beginning to feel a little more confident now um, as we continue to uh, build up and um, work towards, uh, you know, pushing the, the Germans back to where they came from. And so we roll into turn nine. Thanks again for watching this episode of No Retreat, part five of this ongoing series, chronically one of the best games I've ever played of this game. And I hope you've been enjoying it. And uh, please like and subscribe if you have a chance. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again in episode six. This is NATO with Legendary Tactics.